Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about exception handling. So in this exception handling, I am going to demonstrate how to create user defined exception and how to handle the user defined exception with an example program. So first we need to understand what is exception handling. So exceptions are basically error conditions that we need to avoid. So when we create a Java applications, we have to find out all possible errors and we have to uh, use try catch block and handle the errors right so uh, some errors will be uh, generated by system automatically it will be generated for example divide by zero error or array index out of bound exceptions so these exceptions actually automatically generated by the java virtual machine depending on the error situation so for in order to handle that we need to write try catch block sometimes uh, beyond this sometimes you want to create your own exceptions for example, I want to create my own exception class, my exception type, and I want to throw the exception. So that only we are going to discuss in this video. Let's start with the introduction, creating your own exception using exception subclasses. So uh, even though built-in exceptions are handled most of the common error, sometimes in order to do our own logic, we have to write our own uh, user-defined exceptions. Let's see how we can do that. It is very simple. You have to create a subclass for the predefined exception class, and the subclass name can be a, a particular error name. For example, uh, it can be an invalid number, or it can be an invalid uh, age, or it can be an invalid name. Some uh, based on the user input. Okay, so you can choose one name for the error exception, and you can create a class by extending from the predefined class called exception. Then we have to implement the constructor for setting the error message. Once you create the class, then wherever you want to generate the error, you can use throw keyword and you can create one object for this class and you can throw the exception. That, that exception we have to handle using try catch block. Right? So this is an ex example. So here I will just explain about the examples to understand how to hand, uh, create a user defined exception. For example, assume that you are creating a program where you want one positive integer as an input. Positive integer is an input. But sometimes a negative input, uh, so user can enter negative input also, right? So if, if the input is negative, we want to throw one exception called negative exception. So if you want to create a ex such exception, you have to create a, first you have to create a class, negative exception, name you can select, you can choose. Uh, first letter and the first letter of every word you just keep it capital letters that is a recommended way of creating exception class name then extends the predefined class called exception then inside you have to write the constructor for setting the error message so implement the constructor inside you have to pass the error message so this is the error message and this error message you have to set to the exception object for by calling super function super and you have to pass the exception message so once you create this class, we can able to uh, utilize the class. For example, in the main program, so this is the main program, I have written one static method called method. So this method is only doing the job, right? It will check whether the number is positive or negative or not. So I'm getting the input, positive number. Now uh, here I'm checking whether it is negative or not. If it is negative, I want to throw one exception. So create one object for the negative exception class previously created here. Here you can see the negative exception is class is available, right? So for this class, we have to create one object and you have to pass the user defined error message. You can pass error message. This error message will be coming to this constructor and it will be set to the exception object, right? So and then once you create the object, you have to use throw keyword and throw the exception. So if you are throwing an exception, you have to use throws keyword to notify the exception type so that the whoever this method is uh, whoever is calling this method can write try catch block for this exception so for example in the main method here i have uh, written try and catch right so inside only i'm calling this method right because of this throws keyword i can i come to know that this function will throw negative exception so we can write try catch block and we can handle the exception so this is a simple example now i'm going to talk about one more examples with the hands off session so I'll, I'll show you how to create a user defined exception using Eclipse IDE. So first thing is you have to create a 
project. So already I have created one project called demo project in Eclipse IDE. Now we'll add one class called demo. Include the main method. So now the program is this one. So inside this program, what I'm going to do is the task is I want to get one name as an input. The task is I want to get one name as an input and I want to check the name contains any number or not. For example, if the for example the expected input is the expected input is a name. For example, John. This is a valid. Okay, it's a valid name. Suppose if you give input like uh, the John with some numbers. By mistake, some numbers, the user may type some numbers also. This is wrong data, right? So I want to check whether the given name has a number or not. If it is coming, name is number, I want to generate one exception. I want to show one exception called invalid name. Invalid name exception. I want to throw. So invalid name exception is not a predefined exception. We have to create our own user defined exception, right? So let's see how to create this invalid name exception. So first we have to create a class invalid name exception extends predefined class exception. Inside we have to create a constructor to set the error message. So inside you take the error message. Okay, so error message. And this error message, message we have to set by calling the super method. Just call the super function and pass this error message so that the error message is set on the object. In, in the in the pre, uh, super class constructor, the error message will be initialized. Right? Now we need to get input, right? So we have to we have to get one uh, that is a task, right? Task is actually I want to get one now, name as an input, right? So we to take that we need a util package include the scanner class so now after including scanner class i want to take i want to do this logic using a function okay so i have a main method here inside this main method i'll main program so i'll create one more static method which will do the checking check name logic okay so it will do check name logic so which will accept one name as a input okay so this is a static okay so static function this static function we can call like this check name and we can pass the name okay so uh, for getting an input we have to use scanner class so use scanner class create a scanner class object now you ask the user to enter the enter the name So name we can store in our variable string name equal to sc dot next line. So we can use the next line method. Right. So once you get the next line method, we can pass the name for checking whether the che the name is uh, name contains a numerical value or not. If it is numerical value, I want to throw invalid name exception. Right. So what we can do is the name will be passed on to this function. So here we have to write the logic to check the given name is uh, having a number or not. Okay. So first, how to do that? Okay. First, what we can do is I need to take every character and I have to check whether it is a numerical value or not. First, I have to take J, J then O, then H, N, 1, 2, 3. Every character I have to take and I have to check whether it is a, uh, whether it is a digit or not. Okay. So for that, you first we need to create convert as a characters. Okay, first we need to convert the the entire string as a character array. So we can create a character array and take the name dot. There is a function called to char array. You can use to char array function. So this to char array method returns a character for array. Okay, so we can store it in the array variable. So now uh, first I am assuming that there is no First, I am assuming that there is no uh, numerical value. So, flag is set as false. Okay, flag is set as false. Now, we have to iterate one by one. Each character we have to take and we have to check whether it is a, it contains a numerical value or not. So, for that, we can use the enhanced for loop. 
for ch in for we have to uh, iterate for each character from the array we can check that character is a digit or not so in order to check character is a digit we have to use this character class we can use the character class dot is digit function is there inside is digit function you can pass the character so this will uh, this will return false this one this will return true if the character is a digit okay so the moment it becomes a digit we have to change the flag to true so uh, the assumption is wrong right initially i am assuming that the name should not contain the name will not be con contain any uh, numerical value right so assumption is wrong i am setting as of true so once it is true we have to stop the process break it okay got it so now uh, this for loop will continue check every character when it reach a first digit it will set the flag to true and it will break out of the loop now after the loop we can check if the flag is true if the flag is true it means that it contains number right so what you can do is we have to throw one exception okay so we can throw one exception like this if the flag is true we have to throw one exception how to throw exception throw keyword then create one object for the the user defined exception so this is a user defined exception copy the class name and uh, put the bracket and set the error message okay so name is name contains the error message name contains numbers okay so that is the error message okay so uh, this error message is passed on to the constructor look at this this error message is passed on to this constructor and uh, use super method will set the initialize the error message okay so this is for if condition if it is true else means we can display that correct it is a valid name it is a valid name okay right so now uh, from this check name function we are throwing one exception called invalid name exception right the check name function is called from main function so here we have to inform right how what you have to inform is uh, this uh, i am throwing invalid name exception so you should uh, you should handle this okay so how to uh, inform is using throws keyword in the function in the check name after this bracket apply one give one space give one space throws keyword the name of the exception that you are throwing throws invalid name exception okay so now uh, the red color error is actually uh, like now it is not coming right so if you are throwing a exception user defined exception you should use throws keyword to inform to notify okay so now now look at this main method so in this main method here i am calling the function right so look at this this check name function is uh, throwing one exception called invalid name exception okay so we have to handle it so the check name function you have to call inside the try catch block and in the catch block you can print the error message so in the catch block name of the exception is invalid name exception and you can display the error object okay so this is about how to handle how to create this program is about how to create a user defined exception for checking the uh, given name is containing any numerical digit or not if it is contain numerical digit i want to throw invalid name exception right so first you need to create a invalid name exception uh, extends from the predefined exception class implement the constructor for uh, setting the error message now in the uh, main program create one function logic for static function means why i am creating static function is directly we can call without object we can just we can di directly check name function we can directly call otherwise we have to create object for this demo class right so uh, in the check name function write the logic and if the if it contains number throw the invalid name exception and inform throws invalid name exception okay so now in the main method i am taking the input here while calling the check name function you should handle it because it is throwing on invalid name exception right so you have to write try catch this is also very important otherwise you will get error compile error okay so now let's see the uh, output for this program right click okay so we are getting the output like this enter name so now i'm just giving the input 
uh, I'll give input John one two three. Now see, look at this invalid name exception comes. Name con name is uh, name is contains uh, numbers. Okay, so we are, we are getting the message also. That's whatever message we are getting. Okay, so we'll just I think is is not necessary. Uh, name contains numbers. Okay, and if I run uh, with a valid name with a valid name. Okay, so for example, look at this. So for example, I am giving a only John. I am not giving any numerical values. Okay, now look at this. Correct. It's a valid name. Okay, we are getting it's a valid name. So if you give a wrong input, we will be getting that the exception is thrown. One more time, I'll check. John, three four. Invalid name exception. Name contains numbers. Okay. So this is about how to create. a uh, user defined exception and how to handle that using a try catch block also so try catch block also it's very important uh, when you call that check name logic you have to handle the exception